So let's move on to the next big question, which centers around what's actually required to be able to sell in each marketplace, that is in Europe and North America. Let's begin with North America. First off, you'll have to make sure your country of residence is covered. If it's on the list, then you're absolutely fine. The next thing we suggest is using limited liability entity to trade. You may wonder whether you should use a company in your own country or in the US. Unfortunately, this is a very difficult question to answer, as I mentioned earlier, as taxation is a complicated topic. My advice is to speak to an accountant in your country of residence and outline your plan and ask them to identify any potential issues you should be aware of. I know many sellers who use a company that originates from outside the US, including myself. And I know many others who use a US-based company as it made more sense to do this. I wish I could give you a one-size-fits-all answer. However, it's just not possible. Next, your business entity requires a bank account. This must be in the name and address of the business entity. Now that bank account is not required to be in the jurisdiction. In other words, if you have a US company, you don't necessarily need to have a bank account for that US company that's based in the US. You could set the bank account up in another country. As long as the bank account is in the name of the US company and the address associated with that company is the US address, then it'll work fine. That said, most banks won't always enable you to do this, so you may end up having to have a US bank account anyway. I've seen some students successfully do this though. Finally, you must have a North American Amazon Seller Central account to be able to launch in the US in the name of the company that you've set up. In case you're wondering about Canada and Mexico and why I don't focus too much time on them, both of these markets account for less than 10% of the American market combined. And as I've already mentioned, they can be very difficult to set up and sell in. Therefore, I don't spend much time on them for now. See if your country of residence is eligible to sell on Amazon. I've left a link below the video to Amazon for you to check this directly. Next, you must speak to an accountant initially in your jurisdiction to advise whether to set up a company in your country or directly in the US. Of course, if you're already based in the US, then this isn't an issue for you. You'll likely only want to look into what state makes the most sense for you to set up in. Again, an accountant will help you determine this as well. Next, consult with a recognized banking institution to set up a bank account for the company that you set up. And finally, I'll go into setting up your Amazon seller account in the next module. This is extremely simple once you have your company set up. Now let's talk about setting up for sale in Europe. Just like the US, you'll need to make sure your country of residence is covered. As with the US, we suggest a separate limited liability entity to trade there. This business entity requires a bank account to be able to accept funds from Amazon. This bank account must be in the name and address of the business entity. And as with the US, the bank account is not required to be in the same jurisdiction as where the company was set up. Finally, you will require a unified European seller account. This is separate to the one you will require for Amazon.com. The best advice I can give you when setting up in Europe is really to check first that you can sell there by clicking the link beneath the video. Next, speak to an accountant in your country of residence. If you live in Europe, then this will be pretty simple for you. If you're living outside Europe, then start locally and detail out what you plan to do and see whether it makes more sense to set up a company locally or to set up, for example, a limited company in the UK. For many students, it does actually make a lot more sense to set up a European entity as it reduces VAT issues. Basically, if you sell in Europe, with a non-European entity, then you will be immediately liable for VAT in every country you make a sale in, even if all of your stock resides in one central location. For example, if your stock sits in the UK and you sell with a US LLC, well, because of your stock residing in the UK, you'll have to register the VAT straight away as you'll have created a VAT nexus in the UK as that's where your stock sits. Next, let's say then that a German customer and a French customer purchase products that you've made available in those markets after getting your listing translated. Well, you'll immediately have to register for VAT in those countries as your non-European company must pay VAT immediately to those countries. This is an area that's quite complicated, so the best route is to simply speak to an expert. Key with banking is to first decide on the company you're going to use in Europe, and then to establish a bank account for that company in Europe or outside of Europe if that's available to you.